This is the BRS 3000T stove, and it costs only $20. And this is the Jetboil Flash cook system, and it costs a whopping 130 bucks. In this video, I'm going to pit these two stoves against each other to see which one is most worth the cost. Is it going to be the $20 BRS? God damn it. Or the $130 Jetboil? <laughs> Woo! Dang! Let's find out. This is my show, gosh darn. Ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Boxing match. This is already, it's like we have a lightweight champion or like a heavyweight. Yeah, this is like Sugar Ray Leonard versus Mike Tyson. Yes. Mike Tyson's a basketball player. Oh my God. <laughs> Starting off, the BRS is just a stove by itself, whereas the Jetboil is actually a full cook system. So it includes a pot and a stove and a couple of other accessories. Let's start with the specs on the BRS 3000T. This little teeny tiny stove is sold for 20 bucks on Garage Grown Gear's website. And it is one of the smallest and lightest stoves I have ever ever seen. This weighs in only 26 grams, which is basically like the weight of three almonds. Actually, how much does an almond weigh, you think? Hey Siri, how much does an almond weigh? One almond weighs 1.2 grams. Okay, which is about the weight of 25 almonds. This is also a very simple stove. All you have is a little adjuster here that helps control the output of the fuel and the flame. And then you have these three little arms that flip up, boop, that make up your pot support. When I got this stove, the first thing that I noticed is just how light it feels and also how slight it feels. And what I mean by that is it is such a basic and simple thing that it almost feels like it could like fall apart in your hands. <laughs> It's not that it doesn't feel well made. It's not that it doesn't feel, I don't know, sturdy or stable. It's just that it's very, very basic. And so my initial reaction to that was like, well, that could be a really good thing because fewer parts to break, or it could be a really bad thing because it just doesn't feel that sturdy or durable. Let's get to the specs on the Jetboil. There are a lot of parts and pieces to the Jetboil Flash, so I'm just gonna go through them with you so we both know basically what that $130 is getting you. First up, we have a lid for the pot. We have a cup that attaches to the bottom of the pot. We have the stove itself, and we have a tiny fuel canister support. In addition to all of the stuff that comes in this pot for the Jetboil Flash, you obviously have the pot itself, and you have this cute little koozie with a handle that wraps around it. On the side of this koozie, there are actually these plastic flame lines. And as water gets hot in the pot and boils, this flame actually turns red to indicate that the water is boiling. This whole system weighs about 13 ounces, which is roughly 370 grams. If you're keeping track, that is 14.2 times as much as the BRS. How did you do all that math in your head? I did all that math in my head. Nobody helped me. Cut to moments ago. <laughs> Who's the math? Hold on, wait. 370 divided by 26. 14.2 times the weight. Now, if you buy the BRS stove for $20, you're obviously going to need a pot to go with it. And realistically, you can probably expect to spend anywhere between 40 and $60 on an ultralight pot. Something like, this Snow Peak Trek Titanium 700, which costs $50. Even then, with this lightweight pot from Snow Peak and the BRS stove, you have a whole cook system that costs $70, which is still about half the cost of the entire Jetboil Flash system. So now that you know the specs of the Jetboil Flash and the BRS 3000T, we're gonna get onto comparing these two stoves. And that means boiling some water, testing how long it takes, as well as how much fuel they use, and then getting to the ultimate answer to the big question in this video, which is which one of these stoves is most worth the price? Time for some science. Now, if you already have a jet boil pot system and you're curious how to set it up, here's how you do it. We're gonna take our little fuel support thingy. We're going to attach our fuel canister. So easy. <laughs> and then we have our stove. So with this stove, you have the little adjuster on the bottom, which flips out like this, boop. And this is what helps control the output of the fuel. And then you also have your piezo, which is right there. And then the little button on the side. So this whole stove is gonna get screwed onto our fuel. 
but I am going to use the lid that comes with it, as well as using the lid that comes with my Snow Peak pot here. So obviously you can see that the Jetboil Flash system is way taller than the BRS, but this is one thing that makes this system really cool. This is actually a super stable pot system because this pot screws directly into the stove. So as you can see here, this pot basically latches on using these little like nubbins on the side that grab onto the sides of the pot, you know, little nubbins. So I can actually like tap this, boop, boop. I'm not saying I would recommend you do this, but it makes for a very stable and secure system. Now let's talk about the stability on the BRS. So I have on here this very lightweight pot. It is not a large pot. It is not a small pot. It is just pot. And this on there is a little scary. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Well, thankfully in the <laughs> wilderness, you encounter mostly completely flat surfaces. <laughs> it's not stable. I'm not saying it's going to tip over on you. I'm not saying like a light breeze will come by or like your tent mate will fart too loud and this is just going to like knock over or something. What? It's not that, but it does require a little bit more care and consideration in terms of where you set up the stove and essentially being out of the danger zone in case the pot were to fall off of the stove and spill boiling water. Shouldn't worry about this too much. This is a worst case scenario thing. It's just something to keep in mind. Out of the box, Jetboil definitely wins on stability, but it is pretty clunky. The BRS is super tiny and lightweight and also really easy to use. <laughs> but not that stable. But now I wanna to get to the real test. I wanna compare how these two stoves boil water. How easy are they to light? How quickly do they boil water? And how much fuel do they use? Let's start with the BRS. I'm actually going to weigh this fuel canister to start. That way I can weigh it after I boil water and see how much fuel has been used. Bring out the kitchen scale. 174 grams, 16 ounces of water. They're gonna go into my pot. Okay, so next up, I'm going to test how long it takes for this stove to boil the two cups of water. I have here my phone where I'm going to be running a timer. I'm going to light the stove, set it to maximum output, pop this pot on here and start my timer. For you science nerds out there, I am currently at an elevation of 1200 feet. It is roughly 64 degrees Fahrenheit outside and there's no wind and I'm in a controlled environment. Here we go. Oh. And we're off. That's one minute. Two minutes. Three minutes. And we're boiling. It took me three minutes and 25 seconds. Honestly, that's not that bad. So now I'm gonna pop this stove off and we're gonna reweigh our fuel canister. When I started, this fuel canister weighed 174 grams. Now that I've boiled two cups of water, this canister weighs 165 grams, which basically just means that I used nine grams of fuel to boil two cups of water. Quick pause. I like to start my morning by immediately drinking water when I wake up. And when I'm backpacking, I will often add some Element electrolytes to my water too. Now on its own, Element is delicious, but I was inspired by a recipe on their website to try something new, and that is a blueberry orange tea. Now I have some pre-made cold blueberry tea here, but if you wanna make this at camp, what you can do is actually boil water on your stove the night before, steep your tea, and if you're using Nalgene, you can also put boiling water in here and then put this in your sleeping bag to keep you warm while it cools overnight. And then we are going to add one packet of Elements orange salt. This is 20 ounces of tea, and I'm gonna add a full packet of orange salt, but you can definitely do this to taste. And the taste test. Wow, that is so refreshing. Now this is not sweet tea, because Element actually doesn't contain any sugar. But what it does have is potassium, magnesium, and 1,000 milligrams of sodium, which is exactly what you need to replenish your electrolytes. If you go to the link below, which is drinklmnt.com slash Miranda Goes Outside, and place an order through that link, you'll also get a sample pack of eight of Element's flavors, including the orange salt, so you can make yourself some blueberry orange tea for the next time you're backpacking. All right, back to the video. Let's move on to the jet boil. Boop. So, first things first. Lighting this jet boil is slightly more complicated than using the BRS. You hit this little button, burp, 
a spark will, in theory, happen. And when there is gas going, like when you turn this on and hear the gas, that little boop will create a spark that will light the stove. In theory, here's the thing. <laughs> I got the piezo on my jet boil to work exactly once, and now I cannot get it to light. And I've tried everything. I've been like on the phone with jet boil, and I've like trouble shot with them. It seems like jet boil's piezos fail, and they fail fairly frequently, and there are ways to fix them, and jet boil is super helpful about that. Uh, they just weren't able to help me, which is fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just kind of annoying. There is a, about like, 30% chance that this piezo will work and that the stove will light. And if it doesn't, I'm gonna have to use the lighter anyway. Oh. 198 grams. Two cups of water into my jet boil pot. Moment of truth, let's see if the piezo decides to work today. What's your vibe? Definitely not gonna work. Where's my lighter? Ready? Here we almost go. Reset that. Okay. <laughs> Maximum output. Hot start. Great. One minute. You see that? Look at it go! Boiling! Woo! Dang! Okay, so it took me one minute and 42 seconds to boil two cups of water in the jet boil. That is less than half the time it took to boil two cups using the BRS. That is the main claim to fame that you get with the jet boil. This entire system, the way in which this stove works, these like flux rings that help direct the heat. The flux capacitor. This whole system is designed to boil water incredibly fast and very efficiently. And my assumption is that it will be using about the same amount of fuel or maybe even less fuel than the BRS stove because of how efficiently this stove is designed to boil water. Scale. Before we boiled our two cups of water, this canister weighed 198 grams. And now after boiling, it weighs 193 grams. Oh my gosh. So not only did it take about half as long to boil two cups of water using the jet boil, I also used about half as much fuel as I did boiling two cups of water with the BRS. Great Scott. Can you start to see where someone might choose the jet boil over the BRS? This stove is far more efficient at boiling water it uses less fuel, it does it very quickly, it is stable, and it is incredibly easy to use. Probably even more easy to use if the piezo's working. But don't count on it. As far as I'm concerned, jet boils don't come with a piezo. They come with a piezo maybe. <laughs> I cannot believe you went with piezo maybe. What else could I go with? A piezo no. Piezo no! <laughs> so, I have told you the different specs between the BRS3000T and the Jetboil Flash Cook System. I have shown you how easy they are to use. I have shown you how long it takes to boil water, as well as how much fuel each of these stoves use. But now we have come down to the ultimate question, which is, between a $20 stove and a $130 stove, which one of these is worth the price? And I don't mean to be a cheater here or cop out, but honestly, both of them. And here's why I say that. If all you are looking for is a lightweight, simple stove that's not gonna break the bank, is going to boil water, then definitely the BRS is such an awesome option. The other thing I love about this little stove is that because on its own, it's so cheap and it's so basic, you can kind of choose to add on to your cook system with things that might be a little bit fancier or maybe things that you really love and want to splurge on. Over the course of multiple days of backpacking, I feel like carrying the jet boil starts to feel just like overkill. It's too heavy, it's too big, it's too much. The BRS, however, is so tiny, you could literally lose this in a hip belt pocket. So if I'm prioritizing weight because I'm on a longer or a more grueling trip, 
I am definitely going to elect to bring this stove. The times that I have found the jet boil to be particularly useful is when I'm sharing a stove with a group of people because the jet boil boils water so quickly and it uses so little fuel that you can really just have every single person share the jet boil and quickly have their meals like cooking and ready to go, water boiled for drinks and not have to be like bringing a ton of extra stoves or trying to share something like the BRS, which is gonna consume a ton of fuel and also take a long time to boil water. But here's the fun thing. These aren't the only two stoves that exist in the world. There are other options. And in my mind, there are a couple of stoves that kind of fit the perfect middle ground. This is the MSR Pocket Rocket 2 and it costs 50 bucks. And this is the Soto Windmaster and it costs 70 bucks. The Pocket Rocket 2 is awesome because it's very stable. It actually boils water quite quickly and it is pretty efficient at using fuel. For 70 bucks with the Soda Windmaster, you get a stove that is incredibly reliable in very similar conditions to the jet boil flash. Meaning that this stove does a great job of boiling water when it is windy outside. It boils water quite quickly. It doesn't use a ton of fuel. I just find it to be a really awesome system. So if you're like me and you're not really sure if you're more in the ultralight camp or if you're more in the like ultra cozy camp, then probably some sort of middle ground price point stove is the way to go. But if you're a definitive ultralighter, definitely go for the BRS. And if you are certainly looking for something that is going to be simple, you can share it with a group, you can rely on it, the jet boil cannot be beat. That concludes my comparison between the $20 BRS 3000T stove and the $130 jet boil flash cook system. I have done a lot of these comparison videos, so if you have another piece of cheap versus expensive gear you want me to compare next, let me know in the comments below. And as always, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you outside. Bye. You coming in, Tucker?